Next speaker, uh, the only speaker in session two, is Dr. Nolan Clark. He's going to be discussing regional water planning. Uh, a little background, Dr. Clark is an agricultural engineer who's had a, a long career in this area. He started work in 1971 in, in Bushland, Texas at the ARS Center there. He served as laboratory director at the Bushland from 1993 until his retirement this last year. He is currently serving as a collaborator still with, with uh, the Conservation and Production Research Laboratory at Bushland. And he's here today under the title of the Chair of the Agricultural Water Use Committee and the Regional Water Planning Group. So I would like to welcome this little Dr. Clark. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Dick. What I want to do today and what Dick is asking me to talk about is, I don't know, is it's regional water planning. And so uh, to kind of get uh, started here, uh, this was, the regional water planning was mandated by Senate Bill 1, which was uh, passed in 1997. Now, up until that time, there had been several state water plans that had been developed. I can recollect back to far as sometime in the 50s when they started doing these. They did those on about a five to ten year cycle. But uh, this established a, a regional water planning activity. And so some of the functions of the regional water planning is to address the water needs of all the water users. And so they've identified a number of, of these water users. Agriculture is one, livestock is one. Uh, you know, steam generation is, a, is in manufacturing, industrial, cities, counties. There's a, a number of, of groups that are represented in the regional water planning process. And so all of those have to have to be included. Also, uh, there are 16 regions in Texas, and I'll show a map in just a minute. But primarily, this was done in the response of the drought of 1996. But uh, again, this offered an opportunity for, for regional water planning. Now, you'll notice on this map, the green area is the Panhandle uh, Water Planning Group. There are 21 counties in this group. Now, you, you kind of wonder, well, that shape looks kind of funny for the Panhandle. Well, our friends in the Texas Water Development Board only think about surface water. So these districts, and especially if you look at some of the others, are, are based around rivers. So basically what they did is they took the runoff of the regions for the Canadian and the Red River uh, up in the, in the west part, and they made that the Panhandle region. And so uh, we go all the way, we include Childers County, for instance, as part of this region. So. Uh, it, it's kind of a funny shape, but uh, it, you have to kind of think in terms of, of the surface water uh, areas that are, that are included. I'll mainly be talking about activities, and the data I show will be from the Panhandle uh, Water Planning Group, but the Lano Estacado Group, which is right straight south of us, headquartered in Lubbock, is, is going through a similar process, doing similar things that we're doing in, in the Panhandle uh, region area. Well, some of the steps that we had to go through, and, and these are were written in the law, and also the Water Development Board gives us pretty stringent requirements, and sometimes we would like to, to venture off, but they keep dragging us back into these, these requirements. So uh, sometimes this is like trying to put a, a round peg in a, in a square hole, so we try to fit these requirements that the state imposes on us. But uh, this is what we have to do. First of all, we have to describe the region as far as population, the topography, the soils, what are the characteristics of the region. Then we have to determine the current water demands. And also we have to project those water demands out 50 years. So we, we have this crystal ball that we work with, you know, to, to try to put all this together. But try to project what we think the water demands will be. And we have to do that for all the individual water user, user groups. Then we have to determine how much water we have or how much water we think we have. And so, again, looking at that and projecting that for 50 years. And, and really, what, when you get those two numbers, you just take the difference between those and see how they work out. Well, uh, as you can tell, it's, uh, 
when we get out into some future years, we have some shortages in certain, certain areas. We call those needs, and we have to look at those. So we have to do that and determine. Then we have to determine what the social and economic impact is. Then we have to develop, if there is a shortage or is a need, then we have to develop a strategy for that. And how are we going to meet that need, not only in the short term, but in the, in the long term? Then there's, uh, again, uh, things we have to do is identify uh, unique stream segments, river flow, and my response to that is what river flow, you know, uh, what we have uh, in most of our area. Uh, unique reservoir sites uh, doesn't apply much to this area. Uh, coordinate with the other regions when we have shared resources. Uh, as many of you know, we have a water uh, management area here in Grimwall that transports water to the uh, to Lubbock in that area, so it's transferred across the regions. We have to work with that region in, in that area. Uh, then we can propose regulatory, administrative, or legislative recommendations. And again, these are just things that we think we might want to see changed. We can propose those to the, to the legislature and to policy making people. But most of all, we must plan for all water user groups and what we need to do there. And you see some examples. Now, there's some things that we do not do. And I think this is important for us to know. We don't change existing water law. We do not affect the water rights or contracts. If anyone has a water right or contract, we cannot do anything with that. We just put that in the plan and work with it. Uh, we do not have any implement implementation authority. We can only make suggestions and recommendations. So we have no authority to, to implement anything. <clears throat> and we do not replace the groundwater districts. In other words, we have no, only influence we have on the groundwater district, again, is to make some recommendation to them. So, it's important to know things that we do not do as well as the things that we do do. Well, what have we done up until this point? We, I said it started in 1997. In 2001 and 2006, we submitted a plan, and those have been released, published, and that's currently what we're operating on. Right now, we're working on the 2011 plan, and we have to have a draft of this plan to the Water Development Board March 1st. Of this year uh, and the other things that we've done is updated the groundwater model and then of course we've looked at the needs and, and water management strategies and I'll be talking a little bit about uh, some of those things that we're, we're looking at right now in the Panhandle region in this 21 county area in 2000 we estimated that we used uh, 1.7 million acre feet of water. That actually increased a little bit to 2005 to 1.8. And looking at what we're projecting for 2010 is still in that 1.8 category. But what we projected out to the year 2060 is that there will be a reduction to uh, about 1.1 million acre feet. And the reason for that is, is because we just Dewater the aquifer. There's not going to be enough water to continue pumping at the level that we are at today. Now, in the 21 county area, this is kind of a breakdown of the of the water use. Now, Dan talked about 95% irrigation in his water district. Remember, that's only 10 counties of the 21. So, and he didn't include Amarillo in his district. So, when you include that. These numbers change just a little bit, but generally, irrigation is the predominant water use in, in the area. So, uh, this is what we look at, uh, but we see these different uh, water use areas.